All right, so in this video today, we have a new uh, review of the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flyknit 2. This has been uh, very heavily requested and one that I've been obviously wanting to get my hands on as well because the Flyknit 1 was just an incredible pair of sneakers. It was something that I was asking for from the very inception of the 4% that came out with the Zoom X technology. Uh, and they actually made something that I was absolutely uh, in love with. So this is the second iteration of that. I will be comparing it to the first version and let you guys know the similarities and differences that I see on that. But all in all, this is an incredible shoe. And if you guys wanna buy a pair of them, uh, check the link in the description. Right now, it looks like they're actually on sale for like 145 for some reason. Uh, retail is 180. So if you guys want to check the link again in the description, uh, hopefully they'll still be on sale for you guys. But really uh, an incredible pair of sneakers that I think that if you've never tried the Invincible runs yet, first of all, you just need to go out and at least try on a pair if you can. If not, I recommend buying a pair, trying them on, and if you don't like them, then obviously you can return them. But this is like a max cushion, comfortable pair of sneakers. And the reason why it answers my calling from what Nike did with the 4% is because uh, it's first of all Zoom X technology, which is the midsole and it's soft and squishy, but there's no gimmicks on it Meaning that this is actually a full-length Zoom X midsole other shoes like the Zoom Fly and the Pegasus Turbos They say that they're Zoom X, but they're actually like an encased Zoom X on the Zoom Fly 5s And then on the Pegasus Turbos, it's actually 50% Zoom X, 50% Nike React This is full-length uh, Zoom X in the midsole and it is glorious. It's a really ridiculous uh, generous portion of uh, Zoom X in the midsole so so crazy, but then also, the width of the shoe makes this an incredible combination. So you have soft, squishy, cloud-like, spring back, uh, Zoom X, and then you do have uh, the width that makes it so it is actually uh, pretty well supported as well. So those are two things that I absolutely love that they did with this model, and they continue to do in the newer version. So right off the bat, like, is this one better than the first one? That's the number one question I get on Twitter and Instagram and everywhere else. Like, is this that much better than the first one? And I'll tell you just straight out the gate, no, I don't think it's that much better than the first one. If you have the first one, do you need to get the second one? Not if you have enough tread and, and life in the first one left. The second one is kind of a novelty to have the second one. Or if you can't get the first one in your size, get the second one and it's basically the equivalent. Uh, the main reason why I think it's the equivalent is because the midsole and outsole traction is exactly the same. There's no difference, there's no upgrade, there's no changes in this midsole uh, setup as far as I can tell. And it's not a bad thing that that's the case. Both of the midsoles, both of the tractions are good. And like why change something that's actually functional and actually works well. Primarily the only differences that I can see between the two shoes, one is the tongue. I actually like the tongue of the first one better. It's kind of a more softer neoprene tongue. It's just softer on foot. And then that same material is around the collar of the shoe in little sections here and then also around the back. It's a little bit puffier on the first version. Uh, but I actually prefer that over the second one. The second one is more of like a, a knit material, uh, which isn't bad. Again, if you don't have the option to get the first one in your size, you can spend a little bit more, get the second one, and you're obviously gonna be super happy because it's gonna be a super comfortable shoe. But I do like the neoprene softer material on the first ones over the second ones. The other major difference that you can see right here is on the medial side, they actually have a Nike swoosh on one side versus the other one has the outline of the Nike swoosh. Uh, similar to the way it is on the other side. So they actually changed that up. There is a difference in the heel counter on the second one over the first one. It adds a little bit of stability to it, which I kind of like, but you could see up the sides, there is a Nike swoosh here now that has rubberized material that kind of comes up with a little curve versus the first one. But then you do have the Nike swooshes right above that and versus on the actual extension of that um, like heel counter. So even though there's a little bit more support on the heel of the second version, honestly, on feet, I wore them side by side. I didn't notice the added support on there. They both are pretty supportive, to be honest. Again, because of the width of the uh, the Zoom X and the placement of that. And also the last thing that I could see that they changed up is the fuse material around the lace holes. On the first one they changed and just made it a little bit more modular and have in individual fuse uh, spots around the laces. So it's a little bit more seamless on the second version versus the first. But honestly, I don't mind that fuse material on the first one. So it's not a huge upgrade or anything like that. It's just a different style. So uh, I'll say that again, uh, not much of a difference between the first and the second. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. It just now means you have options between the first and the second version. If you can get the first one for an extreme discount, 100 bucks or so, versus the second one at like 150, 
save yourself the 50 bucks in my opinion get the first one if you can get a colorway that you like so you might get a pair of the first ones in a non-desirable colorway and then really not wear it as much because it doesn't go with enough of your outfits and stuff so in that case i'd rather pay the extra 40 or 50 bucks get the second version in the colorway and the size that you want since they're more readily available. I'll link the first version and the second one in the description of the video if you guys are interested in buying either. They are an affiliate link, which means I do get a kickback uh, from Nike if you guys use my link. So it's greatly appreciated when that happens. So some product details about the shoe. It's the Zoom X Invincible Run Flyknit 2. $180 at retail, but again on sale right now for $145 if you hopefully uh, get those at that price. Train hard, keep running, keep pushing your runs to the limit. The Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flying It 2 keeps you going in the same super soft feel that lets you feel the potential when your feet hit the pavement. We created the shoe with plenty of snappy responsiveness and our highest level of support to keep you feeling secure and competitive. It's one of our most tested shoes, still designed for you to stay on track and away from the sidelines. Three flyknit components are placed in different areas of the shoe. At the tongue, seamless engineering has created soft padding and adjustable fit. The vamp is soft with a highly secure fit. And finally, the heel is built with a clip for containment and cushioning. The result is an upper that keeps your foot feeling comfortable and stable while you pound the pavement. Higher foam stack provides even softer feel, a wide exaggerated shape at the forefoot offers a more stable ride. More bounce with every ounce. The Zoom X foam is responsive and lightweight, giving you bounce in every step. Shaped like a rocker, the foam provides support for the three phases of the runner's stride. It offers flexibility when your foot rises off the ground and a smooth ride when your foot is moving forward and cushioning at ground contact. We used runner informed data to create a waffle outsole for traction where you need it. This info also helped guide the design and look of the shoe sidewalls. So that's a little bit about the shoe. Let's check out the weight. It weighs in at 10.3 ounces versus the first version, which is 10 ounces. So I wanted to mention the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp and this is the trainer version. This thing is absolutely insane and it weighs 11 ounces. So a little bit heavier than both of these ones out here, but the stack of the, uh, the fuel cell is absolutely ridiculous. And I have a video review on these. If it's not up before this video, it's coming very soon. This is an incredible, incredible shoe as well. Very, very similar in my opinion to this shoe, just with the overall stack height and the overall soft, squishy comfort. They're both really just crazy for wearing casual. You can obviously wear both of them for running as well, which is the intended purpose, but both of them are great casually as well. This one is insane and the price point is roughly the same. But when I try both of these on side by side, I do feel more squish in every step in this shoe than I do even in this one. So that's pretty significant. The, the New Balance Fuel Cell is very similar to the Zoom X in my opinion. It's soft, it's squishy, it's responsive. The foam density is actually softer in the fuel cell than it is in the Zoom X. Ultimately, they're both unbelievably great options for your feet if you're looking for max stack, max cushion. Anyways, as I mentioned, the sizing of these are true to size. I went with a 9.5. I'm a true 9.5 and these fit me just perfect. Loved the fit and I wouldn't change it for anything. The comfort rating, if I had to give this a comfort rating out of 10, dude, it's like a nine, nine and a half out of 10. It's, it's like incredible. And I'm talking about soft, squishy, relaxed, insane comfort recovery like running or recovery walking pair of sneakers it's funny because i haven't worn this shoe as much in recent times as i probably should have and so when i threw this one on the last couple days walking around i'm like dude it's crazy how insanely soft and cloud like pillow like the entire midsole is of this shoe it's by far one of my favorite models from nike for soft squishy comfort better than the zoom fly fives better than the pegasus 39s these things are absolutely king A wide foot friendly rating i would give like an eight out of ten I mean, it's good, it's really good. Obviously the base of this thing is extremely wide, uh, so I love that. It does have a detached tongue at the top and then attached down here and then the rest of the way. But overall, I mean, it's really good for my feet, which are fairly wide. If you have really wide feet, uh, I'm not really sure. You can leave a comment in the comment section if you've tried them and you do have that situation. But for overall general wide feet, like this is a really good option. Breathability rating, honestly, like I try to breathe inside of this and put my hand in here and feel it. It's not very good. The first version is much more breathable than this. This I would give probably like a six out of 10. It's not very good at all. Versus like the Super Comp trainers. I mean, these things are like probably like an eight or a nine out of 10. Very breathable option if you're looking for something that has just more circulation for your foot. But found that these ran a little bit hot. That's just my opinion though. Foam density rating is like roughly like a 28 or 30 or so. It feels softer in hand than the rating would suggest versus the fuel cell, which is much softer in hand and like a 26 or so. So softer in hand and on feet, but the overall squish when you're walking around the Zoom X is insanely soft and squishy, especially for like a heavier set dude like myself, like you feel the max Zoom X squishy feel when you're like heavier walking around in these. I'd say ground feel rating, you can't really have like a lot of ground feel when you have a max stack this high. So the ground feel is probably like a six out of 10. However, it does have a good feel overall. Heel to toe transition, not bad in these things, it's just really bouncy. The stability rating, I would probably give like a 7.5, maybe even a 7.8 out of 10. It's really good stability actually considering how tall and like just big the midsole is, 
but because it's so balanced in the width of the shoe, it actually is really, really stable. And actually for stability, I'd actually choose this one over this one. This is not bad at all. Like it's actually better than expected as well. But um, overall, the Invincible Run 2 is really quite a stable ride considering. Traction rating, probably like a seven out of 10. In fact, leave a comment in the comment section if you wore the first versions a lot. Do you guys have any issues with the traction wearing through the bottom or not? I'd love to see some pictures on Twitter or something like that if you guys have that. Uh, but uh, but I'd probably give it like a seven out of 10. It's decent traction. You can definitely feel the soft squishy feel underneath, which means it probably wear down a little bit, but uh, ultimately I'm not the best judge because I have not worn those ones to the bone. And that brings me to durability. And honestly, I wear the first ones quite a bit. Um, they're still really, really dirty. I haven't washed them, but uh, but honestly, they were pretty durable considering Zoom X is a softer foam, but I didn't feel like I was just wearing those ones down too thin. But after using them a little bit, I would safely say that's like a seven out of 10. It's just average again. There's nothing about the shoe that goes, okay, this is one that's gonna keep going and going. In fact, some parts of the Zoom X, you could see ripped a little bit on the first version. So, I mean, I'm sure that's gonna be a case for a lot of people, especially if you have this one shoe and the only shoe that you wear the entire time. I can't believe it being higher than a seven. But if you have lots of shoes that you cycle through, of course, they're gonna last longer. Aesthetic rating, I would give probably like a seven out of 10. It's kind of chunky, it's kind of funky looking, uh, but it's not a terrible looking shoe by any means. It's just not the most attractive shoe you're gonna throw on your feet. It's not like anything futuristic or aerodynamic or just crazy sharp in design. It kind of reminds me of like a Honda Civic from back in the day, like it's a sleeper and it could have some incredible stuff under the hood. Uh, and it does with the Zoom X, just the average person wouldn't know it. So recap some of the things I really like about the shoe. Obviously the midsole is amazing. Full length Zoom X, soft squishy, maximum stack height, also, the maximum width of the shoe makes it really, really functional. It's just the right proportions to make the shoe an extremely nice feel on feet. If you had clouds that you could strap on your feet and walk around, uh, these would pretty much be that. It feels that good. And if I had to nitpick on a couple of things, the knit upper is not as good as the first, in my opinion. It's just, maybe it's more durable, but it's not as breathable. So there's a downside to that. And also the shoe is a little bit heavier for a full length Zoom X shoe. Like, the 4% are like six point something ounces. This is 10, so obviously it's a little bit more. It doesn't feel heavy on your feet by any means, but I'm just pointing out it's 10 ounces. My final thoughts, is it worth buying? Absolutely, especially if you want something that is max cushion comfort, like squishy feel underfoot, a lot of it, uh, with this model more so felt than any other nike shoe that you could get in my opinion the infinity reacts pegasus 39s the zoom fly fives this one takes the cake in fact i could do more of a comparison video between these and some other models if you guys have a preference leave a comment because uh, i wanted to start doing some comparisons to some of the newer stuff that i have now available because there's a lot of details to go over a lot of the different models, especially different brands. The Asics uh, Gel Nimbus 24s, and there's a whole bunch of different stuff. The, the Brooks Glycerin 20s, all really, really good shoes with nice uh, cushioning. But I would say if you can get the first one in a color that you like, in the size that is appropriate for you, uh, this is a great value if you can get it on sale as well. Uh, there's a lot of ifs there, but ultimately I like that version just as much, if not better than the second version. And it's honestly a little bit less money. So if you can save the money, get the first version, your feet are going to be thanking you because it has the same midsole sole setup as the second version. So there's not too much different. I actually like the neoprene style tongue and collar on the first one better. And it is a little bit more breathable on foot. But alternatively, if you want to try something different, this is an incredible pair of sneakers right here. Almost like the perfect shoe uh, for my feet as well. This is a Fuel Cell Super Comp trainer again from New Balance. Unbelievable, really, really soft. I actually like Fuel Cell better than Zoom X, which is crazy. Uh, but it's a little bit softer on feet than even this guy. So uh, that's my video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If it was insightful and it was helpful for you guys, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys want more videos like this. And then also if you guys want to buy a pair, again, use my links in the description. I'll actually post all three of them over if you want to buy the super comps, the first versions or the second versions. And hopefully you guys will find uh, something in your size and in your color that you're looking for. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you guys for stopping by and hopefully we'll see you guys back for some more sneaker videos. Race tonight. Peace guys.